Hello, citizens of YouTube. This is the Geeky Nerd here. And today we're going to be talking about what you should have in your range bag. This video was actually actually suggested to me by a user NGB802 in our thank you 100 subscribers video. So thank you NGB802, fantastic idea. So we're going to go over here, uh, his channel, I'm actually going to link to it in the description. So go check him out. Um, but with that said, I'd like to say thank you out to everyone who has subscribed, liked and commented on the previous videos. Like I said, this video was uh, made just for my comment. Fantastic idea. So leave them down or let me know what you guys are liking if you do or don't or if um, you have an idea for a previous video. So let's get into it here. So what should you have in your range bag? Well, these are a few of the necessity items that I carry always with me in my range bag wherever I go at any given time. Now, one important thing you want to uh, you want to kind of distinguish is items that you are actively planning on using and items that are kind of if you know if the excrement hits the ceiling oscillating unit <laughs> um and with that said uh these are just a few things that i like to always keep now this isn't a full inclusive list there are certain things that i'm not going to you know including here like your targets or your stapler or anything like that because those are kind of given if you're going to the range and you know it's going to be an outdoor or whatever you kind of know you need your stapler you kind of know you need your target this is more of just a always stays in the bag and only comes out when needed. So let's get into it. First thing here is a spare set of uh, hearing protection. Now, for me personally, I like to run the Sonic Defenders in ear protection, like with the little caps on them. Uh, I only wear these if I'm shooting like big bore calibers, but it's nice to have the in ears plus these over if it's a uh, particularly concussive uh, firearm. So that's why I always pack an extra pair of these. These are actually the 3M work tunes. Go check out the uh, video that I made on these. They're Bluetooth, they're fantastic, and just work great. Also, I bring these because, you know, when you bring other people along for shooting, you can think of, okay, I got the gun, got everything like that. Sometimes you forget the important safety equipment. So <laughs> hearing, prote hearing protection is one thing that I have learned to always keep in the range bag because you never know if you have a buddy along, you want to go to the range and they get there and it's like, oh shoot, he doesn't have hearing protection. Uh, what are we going to do now? <laughs> so always a good little thing to have. Next thing I always keep uh, in the kit is a cleaning kit. So this happens to be a Otis Universal uh, Pocky Puck cleaning kit. It is fantastic. It has everything you could ever possibly want. It would have patches and different um, bits, little uh, brushes here, the little cables that you can actually pull through, and you can have your... Um, uh, cleaning lube in here. I I only use this for like if I've run out of this other stuff. I'll get to the other stuff in a second here. But this stuff is always good to have, especially if you're having a long long range session and you are actively uh, shooting a lot of rounds or dirty rounds. Like if you're shooting a 22 a lot or shooting a suppressor or anything, anything like that, it's always good to have uh, just to be able to clean your rifle. Also, in the event now you don't have to get this kind. This kind is. Um, really good just for general cleaning. They do make the solid one made by Hops or Hopies or however you guys say it, the, the little orange boxes. Those have solid cleaning rods to where they actually are a rod you can push through your barrel. Those are good if you have some kind of like stoppage or malfunction or anything like that, or you're trying to you know, clear your barrel of any kind of obstructions that you have. Important note, if you get a squib loader or anything like that or whatever, make sure you get the round out of the chamber first. Don't try to, you know, bang it out or if you get stuck around or whatever. Always make sure the gun is safe and clear before you start manipulating it in any way, shape, or form. So, a little PSA there. But this Otis cleaning kit is fantastic. Also, guys, I will, um, for this, because uh, the, the, all of these items I pretty much got on Amazon are different links. Uh, I'm going to post some links in the description for certain things where you can get these like this off Amazon for like 20 some odd bucks. So, so you guys don't have to go looking for it because they make a couple of them and it gets a little confusing at times. So next thing I always bring is some extra lubricant. Uh, this in particular happens to be Slip 2000 Gun Lube. This stuff is fantastic. I've tried them all out there and this is the one that I have landed on. You can see here I actually picked this up from my local gun shop, but I've been buying these online because they've been out. So nine bucks, not a whole, whole lot. But this stuff is is the bee's knees here. You can see here it cleans, lubricates, protects. Um, and the bottle is just fantastic. Just a little screw top, just unscrew it and has a little uh, bleeder valve there. It just comes right out. Really great stuff. It works for, it, it, it is CLP, so 
it uh, it cleans, lubricates, and protects. So if you have excess buildup of carbon, you put it on there. You let it. You wipe it on there with one of the uh, with one of the patches in your cleaning kit. You let it sit there for a couple minutes. There, you wipe it off, and then it leaves a thin film on there to keep your gun functioning normal. This stuff really comes in handy if you're shooting dirty surplus ammo or 22 ammo or the particular case I always have to use this is if I'm running my CMMG 22 LR conversion kit in my standard AR platform gets unbelievably dirty and this just really helps break it all up also when you're running that kit you want to make sure you give it like a light cleaning if you're shooting extended rounds out there before you ram a 556 in there because uh, you could have a little chunk of carbon there and it could have some uh, unexpected results so Always keep a little thing of this in there. Also, it does not leak. You think you think it would, but it has a cap in here. Actually, I'll show you. Uh, oh, never mind. We'll put that in the blooper roll. <laughs> this is one of my older bottles, like I said. The newer ones, though, they actually have a cap in there. You just push a pin in there, and that way it has even less of a chance to come out of the bottle. So put that off to the side here. Next thing I always keep in my kit is a spare parts kit. So this is a little $30 CMMC, or CMC Triggers AR-15 Complete Lower Kit. Uh, depending on what gun you primarily run a lot or a gun that you anticipate of having a lot of breakages, hence the reason ARs, I usually run AKs and my AR breaks more than my AK. Sorry guys, just a fact. <laughs> um, but, you know, it has like these little springs, dibs, and doodads that if your gun breaks, gun has a malfunction, anything like that, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to have a bad day, and there's nothing you can really do about it if you don't have the parts. And especially if you're doing kind of field strip or anything like that in the field, sometimes, you know, these little pieces can just come out, and there you go. So I always like to keep a little, uh, just one of these, just handy in one of the kits of whatever your primary gun that you're running is. Next thing to kind of go along with that here is a multi-tool. So... You can have all these parts that you want, but if you can't manipulate the various bibs and bobs of the gun to get that part out or replace it, then you're, you're, it's just not going to work. Also, this works fantastic if you you know, you know put on your new sight, you forgot to Loctite it, what have you, it starts coming loose. It's a good little thing to have to tighten up. Or if you have that stuck, uh, stuck pin in your AR-15 bolt carrier and you can't get it out, you don't want to have to use a twig or stick or anything like that. So you can just you know pop out the old pliers, pull them out, there you go. Now, I have a lot of multi-tools. This is the one that I just keep in the kit, just ready to go. I've had this thing for years, a little Jeep-branded one, um, and it's serving pretty well. You know, it has a full-fledged knife, which is always nice, uh, especially if you're you know, trying to manipulate anything, cut anything, do whatever. It has a nice full set of pliers that fold out. It has a little... Uh, this is not a flathead, this is not a screwdriver, obviously, but it has an adapter that goes on it where you can put your different bits, your hex bits, your Torx bits, uh, your flatheads, Phillips, what have you. So always nice to have. And yeah, just good to keep in your range bag to be able to manipulate your gun. Now, Real Avid, they make a AR-15, I think it's called the Armorer's Kit. Uh, I have yet to try it, but it does seem pretty interesting. Comes with all like the screwdrivers and like little bits and tools uh, that you can use to fix your gun in the field if needed. Next thing is spare mags. Always keep extra spare mags and different types, uh, depending. Now, especially with AKs, you're going to have a lot of different types, but I will always have at least two extra spare mags in my range bag outside of the mags that I brought to shoot with. And I'll usually mix them up of two different ones in case that AK or gun or whatever is having a bad day that day. Uh, in this case, I just have a Magpul P Mag Gen 3 and a Circle 10 uh, AK mag. Bulgarian one. These things are built like a brick out of house. So <laughs> they're never going to fail me. They never have failed me. I usually just run the Magpul ones because they're cheaper, a lot easier to use. But I always keep one of these uh, for my AKs in the bag because I know they will not fail. I have yet to have one fail. So fantastic. But again, the reason why you want to keep extra mags in your range bag for whatever you're shooting is because the magazine in any semi-automatic weapon is always the weakest link in the entire system. If the gun don't feed, the gun won't shoot. Just the simple fact of it. So I always keep those spare mags because, you know, you just rip it out, say, okay, this mag treat me bad today, put your other one in and go about your merry way. But if you only brought that one mag or you brought two mags of the same kind and you never tested them out, then your whole range day is ruined. So always good to keep a couple extra in there. And of course, I saved the best for last and the most important thing to have in your kit, in my personal opinion. 
This is an IFAC. It stands for an Individual First Aid Kit. Now, you don't have to get something exactly like this, but you should have some kind of medical uh, aid rendering treatment capability in your range bag at all times. Why is that? Well, in the unfortunate event that you... Um, you, your friend, your buddy, or someone else that happens to be at the range that day since you are dealing with something that is dangerous that should always be taken seriously. However, accidents always happen, ammunition can sometimes explode, what have you. You always want to be able to render aid at the shortest available time. And if you have your uh, medical bag in your car, that may be the difference between life and death and maybe too far away. You want to keep it as close to wherever the dangerousness, which happens to be the gun in this case, around you at all times. So if you keep this in your range bag, you know you will always be able to administer render aid at that time. If I would, uh, whenever I go away from my range bag, just take this, I throw it in my belt, walk around with it. It looks a little weird, looks like a fanny pack, but safety doesn't have style. So that's a little PSA there, but you always want to keep some possible way to render aid, whether that's gauze or bandages or aspirin or burn cream or what have you, because you know, some people they'll grab a hot suppressor and yeah, they're gonna be uh, they're gonna be writing with their left hand for a couple weeks. <laughs> so, in my IFAC here, uh, just keep a few different things. Obviously, have never had to use it. Thankfully, again, keep all the rules of firearm safety. Uh, I got some Sealox blood clotting powder. If someone was to uh, have a negligent discharge, whatever, and have a hole going through them, this will stop bleeding. Fantastic! It's a granular powder. You just pour it on a wound, or you pack the wound, and it works really great. A tourniquet. Actually pulled up through that top. Tourniquet, always good to have, especially if you have a kind of large trauma bleeding on any um, major uh, major appendages. <laughs> uh, this one is just happens to be a cat tourniquet. They are fantastic. They do come with a um, tensioning handle, so you wrap it around the wound or you wrap it around the the arm, the leg, what have you, and then you give it a good uh, give it a good twist to cut off that circulation, and stop that major bleeding. If someone was to hit nick their femoral artery or anything like that course do not wrap it around someone's neck <laughs> um in here as well this is a hydrovent chest wound seal so if you have someone who has uh what's called like a uh, flare chest bleeding wound anything like that that where you know they basically got hit in the lung anything like that you could uh use this to patch up that hole and basically prevent them from bleeding out and uh not being able to breathe at all uh wound packing gauze Good thing to have. Of course, it does pretty much the same thing that Sealox does, except the Sealox has a blood clotting agent that will actually, um, it's just, like, just like I said, it's a hemostatic agent that will cause your blood to immediately clot. Uh, and I like Sealox better than the wound seal stuff. I think that, um, what is it? Um, that one tactical company out there, you see it's called, it's called the wound seal stuff. I use Sealox, that's why I don't know about it. Um, but why I like Sealox better is if you have someone who is on any kind of blood thinners, 81 milligram aspirin, things like that, this will stop the bleeding to where the other one will not. It doesn't have enough capability to stop that. Uh, but moving on real quick, wound packing gauze, good thing to have. Uh, but when it's not too severe bleeding, some nitro gloves because the last thing you want to do is have anybody transmit any kind of thing that they have from themselves to you. You don't know if you have cuts on your fingers that day or whatever. And finally, again, you can tell this kit's pretty, uh, pretty densely packed. A lot in a little package here is a um, whatever they call the whatever they call uh, NAR or emergency trauma dressing EDT. I call these Israeli bandages. Uh, um, that's pretty much what what I was trained and uh, know about using them is Israeli bandages. Basically, it's almost like the tourniquet, except it has. Um, it basically has the gauze packed into it, so it's like a stretchy, uh, it's, it's like a brace, you know, like the brace you put around your legs. So it has that with it with a little mechanism that you can use to then tighten over the wound. So instead of just cutting off circulation, if you want to stop the wound, but you need a way to basically hold that pressure on in place without you physically holding that pressure, you use one of these. You can look up Israeli Bandage. I'll do a video on one of those uh, later and generally how they work, but always a good thing to have. Now, as you can tell, this kit here is mainly focused around bleeding. It's not um, a major, you know, major bleeding. I I have a separate kit in the car that I use for uh, you know bandages or just general wrapping gauze or like an ice instant ice pack things like that. But those things can wait. Your buddy, you know, he <laughs> he pricks the sticker bush, it starts bleeding on his finger. He can hold on for a bandage. These are to administer life threatening or 
serious life affecting aid, uh, i.e., person is going to die without these in the quickest, shortest time possible. So that's why I have this kit arranged as such. But yeah, so that's kind of a little, a little mini, a mini, uh, mini medical lesson. As you can tell, the, um, this is the main part of my kit. This is what I want to talk most about. The other stuff is fun, good to have, will kind of ruin your day. But out of, if there's one thing that you have in your range bag, no matter what it is, it is one of these IFACs. Uh, again, it doesn't have to be like this. Um, this is actually by this fantastic company called North American Rescue. Uh, again, I'll put a link for these guys in the in the description. They are fantastic. They offer these uh, kits already pre-built like this, minus the sea locks. Uh, and I think they run like 50, 60 bucks. But it's a buy it once, forget it. Now, some of these things do expire. You do need to replace them, but it's a lot cheaper. But it's good to have. So... With that, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, comment, and or subscribe. If you have any kind of questions about this uh, about this stuff, in particular the medical stuff, you can let me know. I'm pretty well versed in uh, different little medical aspects here. I'm no expert by any means, but I know my way around the block with them. And with that, I hope everyone is having a wonderful, awesome, fantastic day. I'll catch you guys next time. See you guys.